Welcome to this week's Movie Math, giving you an in-depth look at the box office for the weekend of January 13th, 2012, followed by an analysis of Sunday's Golden Globes. Hollywood is holding its breath right now in the grip of suspense as they wait to see if audiences' renewed interest in going to the movies will hold. While 2011 was awash in red, 2012 has begun with a hot streak. The Devil Inside was the big winner last weekend, and this weekend Mark Wahlberg's Contraband took the number one spot with a healthy $24.1 million. The success of both movies took Hollywood by surprise, meaning that the studios haven't really learned anything from 2011, but instead are just taking lucky shots in the dark. Mark Wahlberg, on the other hand, is finally seeing years of hard work pay off, as this is the first time he opened a movie big all on his own. The other guys had Will Ferrell, and The Happening had M. Night Shyamalan. Yes, at one time, Shyamalan was a plus for a movie. Also of note, this was the biggest U.S. debut for a movie produced by the U.K. shingle working title, even if it was a remake of an Icelandic film starring an almost entirely American cast. While of course we all understand foreign film companies gotta start somewhere, they could do a little better job sneaking in their own talent. And although Disney didn't win the weekend as they and the industry had expected, they still came in right on schedule with $18.5 million. But despite the strong showing for the 3D re-release, theater owners were still feeling burned by Disney as the studio had quietly offered audiences another re-release this weekend, Beauty and the Beast in 3D on DVD at retailers like Target and Walmart. As for Joyful Noise, it opened at number four with $11.3 million, right on par with other recent religiously themed films, as well as Queen Latifah's own box office record. As for the rest of the box office, The Devil Inside found out that what goes around does indeed come around, as the poorly received horror flick fell 77% from its debut weekend. Plus, The Iron Lady expanded to just over 800 theaters looking to capitalize on Meryl Streep's awards buzz, and did just that as the biopic entered the top 10 thanks to an almost 3,000% jump. Next weekend, Hollywood is hoping for more good news from the Underworld franchise, while Red Tails and Haywire hope the industry is wrong about them, too. There were few surprises at this year's Golden Globes, but the biggest was how little bite there was in Ricky Gervais's hosting. Maybe it's because his jabs last year were so sharp, but this year it seemed like he just skimmed Us Weekly before coming out on stage. NBC had focused their entire marketing campaign on letting Gervais loose again on the Hollywood glitterati. Yet it seems that from behind the scenes, the comedian was successfully reeled in. And while Gervais had seen his return as a victory over all who'd said he'd never be invited back, it now seems like a hollow victory. One thing that became crystal clear, though, is that this year it's truly a race between the artist and the descendants. But as for grace and charm, the artist won in spades with enchanting acceptance speeches by the film's composer, star Jean Dujardin, and producer Thomas Langman, who told us the touching story of how his late father, French director Claude Berry, had won the Oscar for Best Short Film back in 1966, but did not have enough money at the time to come to America for the ceremony. Plus, they even got the dog up on stage. It was a welcome surprise in a night with few spontaneous moments. But then again, when you turn your awards ceremony into a potential roast, it tends to dampen the party mood. In fact, many stars like Colin Firth and Madonna even seem to come prepared with retaliatory quips, even though Gervais didn't give them much reason to use them. Also of interest was Meryl Streep's apparent guilt over beating Viola Davis for Best Actress in a Drama. But then again, Davis didn't have Harvey Weinstein in her corner. Harvey, or the Punisher as we learned he's known to his colleagues, proved once again that he's the awards whisperer. So what did you think of the Golden Globes? Did the right people walk home with the gold? And did Ricky Gervais deliver? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching. And I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.